for mean trans vexing and maybe terrifying night uh, in the United States of America. And I want to bring you a good word of encouragement because, you know, anytime we get into a real testing time, these are pretty much the same questions that I asked the Lord personally of myself. And so now we can join together and I can ask them and you can ask them for yourself to see if it helps you to go through these trials and tests that we're going through. My first question is, what are we learning? Like, am I, am I learning anything about myself? What am I learning about my nation? What am I learning about ministry? What am I learning about my family? All the different things like what, you know, what, what can be improved? What can be strengthened? What can be, uh, uh, gird us up so that we can battle fear. One of the reasons I wanted to put up on my screen there is the Psalm 91 prayer. Go ahead and get that free download. If, if you misplaced yours or something, go ahead and download it tonight. I would go ahead and be praying this every day for the next couple of weeks and, and it will help bring peace into your own heart and peace into your home. But that's the first question I want you to go in and put into the uh, comments there. Say, I'm teachable. Like what are we going? What are we trying to learn? And I'm gonna we're gonna go into that here just in a few minutes. Number two is what is God training us? Because it's not just enough to learn it. See, learning it goes. Oh, I learn. I know and understand what's happening, but I'm not trained to overcome it. I want to say that again? Okay, I've learned it. I understand it. I have knowledge of it, but I have not been trained in my soul to overcome it. Because this is the key is we really have to be managing our souls right now and our mind, will, and emotions. So right now, what, how, what is God training our souls? And the third thing is this, is he, uh, and this is what I believe he's doing, he is teaching us to wait and trust in the Lord. He's, he's teaching us how to trust in the Lord. Because, and, and this, this is my, uh, this is where I have arrived at this, okay? If anything, let's just look at the past 30 day window. In the past 30 day window, I would say most likely your trust in man has eroded tremendously. I mean, wouldn't that be a fair thing? Uh, I mean, because, uh, you know, we were all raised to be able to trust in the police. And and it's amazing what happened today with, with the police that were around the the most vulnerable place in the whole world, in the United States, the capital of the United States. And basically it was able to be penetrated by, uh, you know, by people. So like, you know, that, that like Lord is, are the, are the police and the, and the protectors in the natural, uh, are they really strong as we think? Well, you know, with what happened today, you're probably not as trusting as you were maybe as of yesterday. Um, with some of the comments that are coming out of both sides and both parties, I would say maybe your trust in man and your trust in some of the political figures that you see what they're doing and saying, you're probably not trusting them near as much as you did even, let's say, 30 days ago or even a couple of days ago, because this has been so revealing with what people's choices and what they do and what they say. And so, so the trust in the police, the trust in the like the uh, protection, the trust in the government, the trust in the government leaders, all of that has been extremely emotionally damaged, particularly today. And that's why the scripture says, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. And, and really the whole theme for what I'm ministering tonight in this very special message, because it's Wednesday night, I don't normally minister on Wednesdays, but the key is do not, and I want you to put this in the comment, say, I will not lose my trust in God. See, that's the key is God has not failed. God, and, and, uh, and so anyway, I'm gonna share that with you. And the key is however this works itself out, however it works itself out, you wanna be found on God's side. And, and tonight I'm gonna to teach you how to be found on God's side because it's not being found on a Republican or a Democratic side or a conservative, a liberal, uh, a moderate. It's not about those sides. That, that really doesn't matter to God. All I know is I wanna be found on God's side. If you want to be found on God's side, go ahead, go into the comments right now and say, 
teach me how to be found on God's side, okay? Because that's where we're going to go tonight. Hallelujah. God is so good. Okay. So our daughter sent this to me today. And it's so interesting because this is out of a little book that our family has read for years. And it's called Jesus Calling. Okay. And today's date is January the 6th. And this is the devotion on that. And boy, is this applicable for us or what? So I'm going to start there. And, and that's kind of where our thoughts are. And then I'm going to teach you how to be found on God's side. Okay. It says, I am able to do, this is speaking in first person of the Lord. Okay. I am able to do far above, I'm sorry, beyond all you ask or imagine. Well, that's good news because that's the key is far above all we could ask or imagine because we're now moving into that phase that I prophesied about. And I'm real careful. I never want to be defending like, oh, I prophesied something and this happened. So check it off and put me, you know, this isn't how it works. The prophetic gifting for me is totally motivated by love and passion for the father. If he asks me to say something, I say it and I stay with it. Okay. And I'm still staying with all the words the Lord's given me. But, but here's the key is with this is that he's going to do something very special for the global good of the faith in God for his kingdom. Okay. He's doing something right now. And I don't think he's really showing anything. Jesus even said that some of these things the Lord does only his father knows. I think this is an only the father knows uh, uh, situation. So if that's the case, I want to be found on the father's side. And so do you. Go ahead. Say it again in the comments. Say, I want to be on the father's side. He says, come to me with positive expectations, knowing that there is no limit to what I can accomplish. Ask my spirit to, here's the key, ask my spirit to control, to control your mind. So I want you to ask it right now. Say in Yeshua's name, I ask the Lord and the Holy Spirit to control my mind. Because listen, you can sit in front of the television and watch all this mass media. The media is the main problem in this whole situation. So don't be sitting there looking for answers for them from them. They're the ones that caused the problem. Okay. So you're going to have to ask the Lord right now. Say, Lord, let, let this mind be in you. That's in Christ Jesus. That this is so timely uh, that this book that we, this new book we just had come out in the ministry right here, this is why this book is here. Man, if you have not ordered it, you need to order it. And I would order five or six, get them to your friends and friends and family. I would have a Bible study in your home going through this. I mean, definitely get a hold of this book. And, uh, and, and you need to get that download of Psalms 91 right now because you need to ask the Lord, say, Lord, I need my mind controlled by you and not what's going on with all this fear mongering that's happening. Okay. He says, do not be discouraged by the fact that many of your prayers are yet unanswered. See, that's the key. Yet, yet unanswered. Hmm. Yet unanswered. A lot of people thought, oh, this is it. January the 6th. This is the day we're going to get the answer. Our prayer is going to be answered. Some said, oh, it was this date and that date. Now the word, I'm just reminding you, the word the Lord gave me was fasten your seatbelts, 11 hours. 59 minutes and 59 seconds. No one likes that word. I don't like that word. But when I asked the Lord, I said, when are we going to break through? He said, 11 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. When's that date? I don't know. You know, that could even be past January the 20th. I don't know. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just saying is like, how do we get found on the side of God? Three things the Lord is teaching us. What are we to learn? What is he training us? And he's teaching us to wait on the Lord. If we can learn to wait on the Lord in a healthy place, we can go through anything this world can dish out. Would you say amen? Say, I'm on board. Go ahead in the comments. Say, I'm on board. I'm on board. I'm not going to be discouraged. It goes on to say here, it's time to, to be trained and teach you to wait upon me. Trust in me in the dark. And that's where we are right now. 
We're in the dark. Joe Biden prophesied it. He even said the dark times are coming. They're here. He spoke it. I don't think it was prophetic, but we are definitely in a dark time. It says the more extreme your circumstances, the more likely you are to see the power and glory at work in your situation. So go ahead and say in the comments and say, I am available and welcome God's glory into my situation. You need to go ahead and type it out. If you're on uh, uh, YouTube and you can't type it out, write it down on a piece of paper. Literally have that, uh, that neuromuscular where you're speaking it auditorily, you're writing it neuromuscularly, you're seeing it visually, and you're literally activating. You say, I will. You're, you're actually like signing a contract in the spirit and, and it becomes more real to you. Okay. So I want you to do that. He said, instead of letting difficulties draw you into worry, uh, try to view them as setting the scene for my glorious intervention. And that's what he's doing right now. Glorious intervention is coming. I'm telling you right now in Yeshua's name, I have had my phone has blown up today. I haven't texted back and called back most of you. And I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't even know if I should apologize, but I really, I didn't have any answers for you. So I just had to wait on the Lord because I didn't want to say, oh my gosh, this is awful. Look what's happened. And um, all I know is Christy and I were invited to be there and uh, we prayed and the Lord told us to stay home. So one of the things that's good about being home today is I've had some time to kind of digest and get still with God and say, okay, Lord, what's our next step? What are you trying to teach us, train us, and transform us? What do we apply, change, and transform? What is our act orders today? And I'm giving those to you right now. He says, keep your eyes and your mind wide open to all I am doing in your life. So the Lord is saying, I want you to focus on what you're seeing and you're learning about yourself, not what's happening in Washington, D.C. Those emotions are being triggered. What are you learning about yourself? Maybe your, your faith is not up for this season of time. What are you training? Maybe your emotions run and jump into uh, things that they should not jump and run into. You know, maybe your heart is not as trusting as you thought it was. It was trusting in the last season, but in this season. So those are things that can be fixed by the Lord. If you ask the Lord, Lord, help me fix them. Go ahead, put in the comments right now. Say, Lord, help me fix them. Okay. So now I want to give you some scriptures. So if you would, I'll give you time, get your pen and paper out. Let me know where you're from. And uh, if this blesses you, go ahead and hit that share button if you would. Okay. So we're going to start out with, um, uh, let's start here. I want to start out with Ezekiel 33 and six, Ezekiel 33 and six. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse six. But if a watchman sees a sword coming, coming and does not blow the trumpet and the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes away any person from among them and he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. Now I was raised with this scripture. This is a 30 year scripture for me, but I wanna to speak to most of my pastor friends, okay? I think it's extremely unwise for you to sweep, to sweep this circumstance under the carpet and say, let's just move on, okay? Let's just move on, sweep it under the carpet. Let's just embrace Joe, Joe Biden and let's just, just, let's just take what's happened and let's just sweep it under the carpet because there's really not there's there's not this evidence, you know, because you know what the media is telling you and different politicians are telling you that there's not enough evidence there. There's not this and there's not that. And to me, you would have to be blind not to see the evidence. The just the sheer math of the numbers don't don't work. I mean, there's evidence everywhere. Now, I, I mean, obviously uh, I, I work with some people and I know about the evidence and the evidence is really there. In fact, the enemy is so 
afraid of the evidence even coming out that today the enemy brought Antifa people. Those were not Trump people. Look at the pictures, look at the tattoos. Look, these people have been found on Facebook, the ones that broke in and broke the gates and broke into the building. These are Antifa members and they, they have pictures of them at other events where they've been. This, this was not mega people. I mean, we have to be wise of the serpent. I mean, it was obvious. There was even threats and it was out on social media that, that Antifa and BLM were going to actually put on mega hats and go and get to the front of the line and cause problems. And that's what they did. And But isn't it interesting that they didn't come out and put their, their attack until what? Evidence. When evidence starts to come and they were going to bring the evidence to the table and, 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 and things were starting to come, then the enemy attacks and gives them the distraction. Let's get the distraction going. And we don't want them to focus on it. Anytime there's disruption, the enemy literally starts to work. I'll give you an example. While this was going down, literally, while this was going down, I've got two family members, okay? And two of my family members that are Israelis, okay? They're on the phone. It's nighttime. They're FaceTiming, okay? Family members. Hey, how are you? Like this, look at the baby, bada bing, you know, this is great. And all of a sudden, the one in Israel goes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and flips the phone on the face, on the, on the uh, FaceTime, and literally, there's uh, jets flying over this area. I'm being careful what I'm saying, but flying over where he lives, right out the back of his house, there's these jets that are flying and missiles are being fired. And these missiles are going into Syria and, and, and you can, they can't see where the missiles hit, but they'll see where the sky lights up and you hear the concussion of the boom. Literally, there is an attack in Israel and in Syria while this stuff is going on. Are you seeing the global spiritual warfare here? That while you're distracted, it is dangerous to be distracted. That's why you've got to be focused and you've got to be living in faith and you can't let fear come. No one's gonna tell me that, that almost simultaneously while this is happening here, this is happening over there, all within, the, within hours of each other. There's this, this enemy that is literally trying to do what? Cover up the evidence. The enemy doesn't want you to have the evidence. And as long as we say, it's okay, I'm weary, I'm tired, I have no more faith for this, and you throw your hands up, then what happens is the evidence gets swept under the carpet. But the scripture says, if a watchman sees this evidence and doesn't sound the trumpet, the blood's on the watchman's hand. So, so you say, you say, well, Kurt, what do you say? I, this is what I'm saying. I'm gonna stand up with this. All right. Am I doing okay? Am I going too fast? All right. See, I didn't really adjust. Let me. My cameraman is a little slow. All right. Thank you, cameraman. You got it just right. Oh, look at that. Hang on one second. Okay, there I am. All right. Okay. I want you to understand this, this because people ask me and say, why do you still believe Donald Trump's gonna be the uh, servant the second term? Because God told me he was gonna serve a second term. And once I hear something from the Lord, I just believe it. Do I know the way of the miracle? No, I don't. That's not really my job to give you the way of the miracle. My job is to position you in the spirit so that when the miracle comes, you benefit from it and you're not left out, okay? So this is how the Kurt mind works. If you go into Proverbs right here, chapter six, 16 through 19, Okay. And, you know, it's interesting. If you look in Isaiah and you look at the seven spirits of the Lord and all that's a blessing, but these are the six thing that the Lord's hate. And I think it's interesting. He says six things I hate and the seventh is an abomination. Okay. So here's the key is, and we're going to check this off that with this current, let's, let's just, let's judge this current election. Okay. Just the current election process, forget the parties, but 
the electoral process, okay, the way that it's been done, do you think, have you discerned with people who are telling you we did everything right, there's nothing illegal here, it's all been found correct, okay? You know, even though we've had a higher percentage of votes than people that are registered, okay? But do you think that, have you ever looked at the spirit on the people that are that are representing that on the news? Uh, whether It doesn't make any difference what party, but isn't it, can we check off that, don't you see a proud look? I was watching this guy from Georgia today and he is sitting there and, he, well, we did everything right this time and it's all correct. Now, they funneled everything back into the same system, but this time they want us to believe it. It went into the same system, but this time because the watchers were 10 feet away instead of 12 and then there was some plastic up, everything's fine. That guy had a proud look, okay? He was a mocking look. Okay, we'll check it off. And the word says, God says he hates that proud look, okay? Now, the next thing is the Lord hates is a lying tongue. Do, do you think there might be some lying going on here? Okay, I think they're lying, okay? Do you think that they're voting for the shedding of innocent blood? Absolutely. The Democrats are baby killers. All right, so they've got a proud look. They've got lying tongues. They're shedding innocent blood. And it says here that they're swift for wicked plans. They're swift. They're swift to it. They're quick. Boy, Nancy Pelosi wanted to get reelected re as Speaker of the House. And she literally brought one of the people in that are COVID positive in some kind of a plastic plexiglass thing so that the person could come into the room. They're swift. They didn't even tell the, the Republicans about it. So the Republicans had to leave all their COVID positive people home, but they're swift to devise. Hey, let's put this like a bubble boy plastic thing around so they can come in the room. But they're always swift to wicked. Don't you think they're swift to like wicked plants? And it says right here that they run or running into evil. Right? And false witnesses. You think there's been any false witnesses that came up through all this to where they're testifying and then people that do testify are threatened and they get bullets shot into their house and all that? False witnesses. But then the seventh thing in uh, this proverb, it says that he calls an abomination. He says one, and this is where I want to focus, one who sows discord amongst the brethren. This corruption... This corruption in this election is destroying the United States of America. It's destroying us. We've got about a 50-50 split of people who have bought the mass media manipulation on one side. You can look at Georgia, and I don't know what the numbers are right or not, but you have a complete split. And it's no accident to me that they pushed this split in Georgia and using a pastor so that they're bringing now, it's bringing even the split even into the church because now you have a pastor that's been falsely elected with the agenda that he has that is absolutely not biblical. But quote, he's a pastor. So now, so the enemy, Satan, is trying to bring division and he's trying to sow discord amongst the brethren. And I, and so you got to see that that these six things the Lord hates. So what happens is when we as Christians choose to sweep it under the carpet and not take a position and not use our influence to be able to call out the watchman and say, this is what's happening in our culture. We are in a culture war. And if we don't rise up and call the evil evil, and when they call evil good, if we are not the righteous balance in it, then we are not the watchman and the watchman is on, the blood is on the watchman's hand. We have to be the ones that stand up and hold the standard and say, this is not right. This is incorrect. It is not right to shed the innocent of shedding of blood. 
But in order to do that, we must have faith in God. And that's, that's the battle. When the Lord gave me the prophetic word and the prophetic word was that we were going to have a category five spirit of fear that was going to come and it was coming up uh, uh, during this season of time. And man, it is here right now. If there was, ev if it ever peaked out, it peaked out today. And so I want to give you a plan, a spiritual plan right now that you can act, that you can apply change and transform so that regardless of what happens, you're going to be found on God's side so that when the miracle comes and it's coming, go ahead and put in the comments, the miracle's coming and your miracle's coming, but it's not coming if you're not found in faith. Miracles come through the door of faith, not fear. Miracles come through the door of faith, not fear. So I'm going to give you a few scriptures. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 30 and 31. If this is helping you in the comments, go and say, thank you. This is helping me. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, 30 and 31. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Okay. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So all the people that are choosing to have the proud look, lying tongue, shedding of innocent blood, swift to have uh, uh, wicked plans, run quickly into evil, bear fault with false witness, and so breath, division amongst the brethren, they're going to fall into the hands of the Lord. That The Lord's going to take care of that. What we want to find out is like what we did at the return, we repented and we asked the Lord to heal our land. And we're turning from our wicked ways and we're relying on the Lord. This was not mega people pushing into the Capitol building. This was Antifa. This is what they did. They're, you're going to see all this come out. This was the enemy trying to put the blame onto those who are tired. Listen, they're not upset about this election. They're, they're upset for four years. You're deplorable. You're no good. You're this. You're that. Four years of, of being beat up. And, and let, let me just say it this way. It's not wrong for someone to get upset and want to do something when you have civil liberties for myself, who have a World War II adopted father, a Korean War father, both Purple Hearts, both raised and spoke into my life about the, the cost of that. They didn't just go on to heaven and leave me an inheritance of some finances and property. They left me with their blood and they all had friends. My father in Guadalcanal lost his whole troop at uh, there at that air base. And he was the only one, the master Marine Sergeant. I know the cost of the freedom that I have. I was blessed to be born in the fifties and I, and I was too young for Vietnam. And, and so I didn't have to go to any of these wars, but I'm carrying that inheritance. And if you think that it's wrong for me to be able to, with the platform that I have to be able to stand up and say, no, you're not going to steal our liberties. You're not going to steal our constitutional rights of what God has provided for us in America for this nation. I wouldn't let you break in the house and come in and take all the family heirlooms. Why would you let them take our, our inheritance as Americans? And that's what's happening right now. And we must not sweep things under the carpet. We must hate what God hates, love what God loves, say what God says, see what God says, and be what God has called us to be. And the Lord will take care of the rest. And in Hebrews chapter 10, 35, it says, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which is of great reward. Don't cast away your confidence right now. Don't be given up on God. You may give up, give up on the Republicans and give up on Trump and give up on this one and that one and give up. I can't tell you, listen, I'm not telling you to trust in me or man or anybody else, but do not give up on God. Do not cast away your confidence. 
You give up on God in this hour, you are going to miss the biggest miracle. And that's why those lions and that vision I had, there were only a few. Stay and hold your ground. He says, he says, for in he says, you're going to have need of endurance that after you have done the will of God, that you may what receive the promise. I'm going to read that again. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which is great reward. Go in the comments, say, I will not cast it away. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm holding on. Tell Go ahead in the comments. I've got both hands gripping this promise and I'm biting down on it. I'm gripping and biting at the same time. I am not, I have lived too long, prayed too much, fasted too much, sowed too much, believed too much, have been through too much to let go when my miracle's coming right now. Verse 36, for you'll have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Go ahead in the comments, say, I'm going to receive my promise. I'm going to receive it. And I'm praying for you, all CLM partners, House of David, my olive tree, you're going to receive the promise in Yeshua's name. Amen. Come on, come in agreement with me right now. Just say amen. Now, here's the key. Romans 11, one through three. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Say, I have faith. I will not, see, when you sweep lies under the carpet, it erodes your faith. Things under the carpet cause confusion and fear. Just go ahead, just, I, I, you know what I'd do? I'd go ahead and put some hardwood floors in your house, in your heart, get rid of the carpet. This way there's no place to put anything underneath. Put some tile down, hardwood floors, stain some concrete, do something where everything that falls on the ground in your life, you can see it and know where to hide it and say, Father God, I will repent. For if the Lord cleanses the house, nothing can live in the house that will destroy me in Yeshua's name. It says, for by this, verse 2, that the elders obtain a good testimony. Say, I'm, I'm obtaining a testimony. Your children are watching you. I just had dinner with mine. Daddy Saba, what is got? Yeah, Donald Trump's still going to win. I don't know how it's going to do it, but he's going to do it. What about this? Yep, that's still going to be okay. The Lord's taking care of Israel. We know that it's the Iranians and what they're doing. We understand how that works. They're, they've got a revenge thing going with Salamali right now, and that's that time. And then we're all distracted. Perfect time for them to try to pull some stuff. But guess what? Right there on the iPhone. Ooh, Look at that. God taking care of the problem. God takes care of all the problems. I got a word for you. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. He's watching out for you. Verse three, by faith, we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God so that things which are seen are not made of things which are visible. Now, I want you to hear this prophetically. Please hear this prophetically. God has a plan for the world, not the United States. The United States is part of that plan, but it's not all about the United States. And it's not even all about Israel. But God has made promises to the Jewish people in the land of Israel, to the people and the land that involve people from all the nations. And God doesn't let anybody interfere with that plan. And the United States is part of that plan. And guess what? Right now, what the enemy is doing with these six things and the seven things that he hates is interfering with his plan. And it's too soon. It's too soon. That's why the word says is that for we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord again. The Lord will judge his people. Let the Lord fix this. Something crossed over in the spirit today. And the Lord's going to move his hand mightily. Now, we're going to close it with this. We're going to close with this. I want you to go ahead and download that clmmin.com forward slash Psalm 91. Okay. I also want you to download this. Um, this is a blog I put out this week. And... Um, it's the secret to overcoming. So download that secret to overcoming. 
okay? And this is a must right here. I want you to order this, Seven Steps to Emotional Healing. Because the key is, is what I'm going to read is this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who, who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek that him. So what is that? That's an identity. Everything I do in our ministry is about identity. So my book, Reclaiming Our Forgotten Heritage, this book, all these books connect you to the Jewish roots of the faith, which connect you to your true identity. So instead of spending a bunch of time watching reruns of the news and polls, you might want to invest in your own identity in yourself. And as you do that, you will strengthen your soul. You'll be found in faith. And the Lord diligently rewards those who are found with faith. And the scripture says, and the just shall live by faith. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you in Yeshua's name. I lift up all my friends and my partners, all those I don't even know that this will be shared with. And I ask, Lord, that tonight or tomorrow, whenever they watch this, that they would call on the name of the Lord. Because the scripture says, all, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I want you just to say this prayer. Say, Father God, in Yeshua's name, I ask that you save me. Save me from this doubt. Save me from this unbelief. Lord, teach me what I'm to learn in this time. Train me up so that I can mature and go to the next level with you. Father God, teach me to wait on you and teach me to trust in the Lord. For you alone are trustworthy. Lord, I transfer my trust and my faithfulness from myself to your faithfulness. And Lord, I thank you for it. In Yeshua's mighty name. God bless you. We love you. Hope this has helped you tonight. You need to get a good night's sleep. And we're praying for our nation. We're believing God for our nation. And we believe that the righteous will prevail in this battle. And the Lord's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God bless you. We love you and shalom.